what are the type of shocks that can explain what we see in the data. So that's going to be the first thing that we have to investigate. So which shock can explain the labor market fluctuation. That's going to be our first question. And you remember we saw um, earlier that um, there are several types of shock, and in particular, we separated between labor demand shocks, so which are shocks that affect the labor demand, that move the labor demand, not the labor supply, and labor supply shocks that are shocks that shift the labor supply, not the labor demand. And um, we see that these shocks have very different implications. So the first question is to figure out which are the, which are the shocks that can explain what we see uh, what we see in the data. So we are going to compare uh, two types of shock. So we are going to compare uh, labor demand shock. And so here the labor demand, so we need a shock that affects the labor demand and we are going to uh, take a shock to labor productivity here, which clearly is affecting the labor demand not the labor supply. So shock to A with um, labor supply shock. And here I'm going to pick the simplest labor supply shock. I'm just going to pick a labor shock to H the uh, size of the labor force just because it's the easiest to analyze. Okay. And but in general, the type of findings that we are going to uh, to reach, they generalize you know, more broadly to uh, other types of shock that are either labor demand or labor supply shocks. All right. Um, so let's compare these two types of shock. The easiest way to do it is to uh, return to our labor market diagram because from the diagram you can see everything. All right, so uh, let's compare labor demand and labor supply shocks from the labor market diagram. Okay. 